All right, here we are again. Jamie Run joining me. Thanks Good to be here. All Good right. to be here, John. I thought uh, for this video, what we could do is uh, maybe let people know what kind of our some of our current favorites are. Um, you know, there's honestly, I think there's infinite choices. There's this. infinite choices. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah. And uh, I could have brought families of. <laughs> I, yeah. And, and you're on some of these forums on Facebook that it's same ones that I am and yeah. probably different ones yet still, but there's, there's, always somebody new coming into the to the group that's like well, give me some advice and i appreciate that new folks are out to try bourbon but it's hard to give advice it's hard to give advice you know what my favorites are there's going to be 20 people that hate it i know and so know. like uh, that weller or that sorry that pot still will it we talked about that before oh some people really like that stuff which yeah. surprises me but you surprises know, me to each their own <laughs> yeah. um like amanda i mean she she'll drink uh bourbon with me from time to time but she has a flavor profile She's more of a weeder. Okay. Um, I've told her this, and I don't know if she thinks I'm making fun of her. I'm not. Uh, a weeder, by the way, is uh, a bourbon that's usually high on, on wheat. I don't know if there's any specific definition on, on that. Yeah, percent not. But it's usually most, there's no absolute as far as uh, Mashable recipes are concerned for that matter either. either. But, um, but she likes something that's going to be a little bit softer, a little bit sweeter, yeah. generally speaking. Uh, whereas my current drink of choice is probably going to be a little bit higher proof probably Typically. cask or, or single barrel mm -hmm. not always but but anyway that's where i'm at so yeah. i thought today we could like you brought a few bottles I brought a couple of bottles a couple of bottles yeah. and let's start with one of your current favorites and i'm not asking you to pick which one's your absolute favorite <laughs> that's like picking your favorite child you know yeah, yeah. i better not do that the, yeah so the uh first one i got is the russell reserve so i could i could have brought Four or five wild turkey I know. family members, but uh, this one for the price point, you're going to get this anywhere from what, high twenties to mid thirties. Is that the same? No, I have the private barrel. Store, yeah, so, so that's a good uh, price. Yeah, it's a good price point. It's it's ninety proof versus your one hundred ones and and uh, I forget what Long Branch is. What's it's a little higher too in it. Well, in the early nineties, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's a little little lower on the proof. Than yeah. what I would typically drink, but it's it's really good. Yeah. Um, it has a a real sweet taste. All right, pour us a couple. Let's, let's, let's get into it. I mean, I you and I talked about this probably one of the last times we recorded a video, and, and certainly when we were chatting one on one. Um, I used to like think wild turkey was bad whiskey, yeah. and I don't know why that was the case. In fact, I'm, I, you know, one of these days I. I thinking about maybe we could do a video of like you know the whiskeys when we were kids oh gosh yeah like the Jim Beam white label and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and just some of those things like revisit some of those because yeah. I, I, you know it may not be bad now yeah might not be bad now and yeah. I, I'm finding this with the wild turkey family so so yeah mm. we have a little bit of caramel in the front yeah Do you know anything? Are all the wild turkeys? I'm guessing they're not all uh, same Nashville, but they're all pretty they're, similar. They're in the ballpark. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I, I do happen to know. Uh, let's see, I have a couple here. I know that the Long Branch has 75 corn, 13 rye, 12 barley. So it's probably somewhere in that neighborhood, I guess. All right. Smooth. It's smooth. It has good legs Did on it. Did you say the proof was on this? 90 proof. Yeah, right here. Hmm. Now, I think we tried that private barrel. Yeah. That was pretty good, too. It was. <clears throat> and for a 10 year to get at that price point, that's crazy. That's crazy. It is crazy. I'm really surprised. I mean, I've had a fair number of 10 years that are way more expensive and don't taste nearly as good as this. No. There's no harshness to it. No. Um, pretty balanced from front to back. And, and I feel like the the nose and the taste are pretty consistent with one another too. Sometimes you get a nose that is way different than the taste. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. <clears throat> I'll put the dead soldiers down somewhere. I might do a little bit of a rinse here, but um, I'm gonna I'll go next, uh, and I'll. Um, I'll stay in your wild turkey family, uh, and I th I don't remember. I think what my story on this one, how I discovered it was not on purpose per se. You and I might have talked about it, yeah. 
but this is the uh, Long Branch, and this is a Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, I think I, it is an 86 proof. I should have brought my glasses. Actually, they're around here somewhere. And I think it's eight years um, from the research that I did previously. But I am, came across this when we were traveling recently, and it was in a duty-free shop. Mm. And Amanda's like, you know, because sometimes you go to those places, and you can't, it's stuff you can't find. Yeah. And Amanda's like, well, is, is this a rare one? And so I looked it up, and Total Wine has it all yeah, day. Yeah, all day. Yeah. And, and a lot of other places do too. So this is pretty easy to find. How hard is this to find? It it's is, not so bad, right? It's not. Every every Kroger's grocery store, um, you can find you can find this in like in your local CBS's. Yeah. So yeah, and price on the on the on the long branch is about I paid about forty seven for yeah. that, so it's mid forties or so. Um, but also a, a wild turkey product. And uh, but I saw this in that duty free shop. I'm like, well, there, it wasn't a special price. Right. It wasn't anything I couldn't find. So I just waited till I got home. And uh, I think the nose is this one. I think has mesquite or something in it, right? It does. Oak okay. and Texas mesquite yeah. uh, charcoal refined. So I get a little bit of that note on the nose. Yeah, this is the one Matthew McConaughey was involved in. Oh, was it? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> it tastes a lot different than that Russell's. Mm -hmm. Not bad, just different. It's a little more buttery. It's a lot more buttery, and yeah. I, I do get the the some of the hints of, of a little bit of oak, a little bit more oak than the Russell's, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that mesquite's. Um, it's there. It's there. Yeah. But in a good way. I mean, I I like this one a lot. So I just this is my second bottle. Oh, okay. Um, and I just came across that, you know, I just bought my first bottle, uh, probably not even a month ago. So we it's enjoy an this drinker. One. Amanda likes this one too. Does so. she? And I think it's probably the proof a little bit it more too. Yeah. I don't, she doesn't, she, I think tends to favor things that are sub 100 proof, Okay. which is okay. You know, uh, and I think this is another thing like, like about bourbon. I mean, the proof point is all over the map. It's sometimes. all over. But I, th I noticed there are, uh, there seems to be a pretty consistent theme or trend, especially amongst um, some of the bigger distillers, where they have products that cover the gamut they do, they of do. proof, right? Usually yeah. 86 is about the lowest when it comes to like a bourbon, right? There's just not many 80 per proof bourbons out there. And if they are, they're, they're usually pretty watered down and they lack a lot of flavor. They do, yeah. So how did you get in, into drinking bourbon? I never was a beer drinker. Oh, really? So from the time I started drinking, it was it was your whiskeys, uh, even you know your Crown Royals and stuff like that, yeah. into bourbons. And so, yeah. um, I was always really a, a wild turkey person. Oh, really? So, so from I the get go, from the get go, yeah, you're loyal. It, it may explain a lot. About <laughs> it, but, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I was always wild turkey, and then it gets, it just kind of went from there because then you start to experiment here, and there is so many different. Uh, flavor profiles yeah. out there in bourbon that you can go down every rabbit hole you want, and, and every it's amazing that you know wild turkey or old forester, whichever line you go up, they all taste a little different. They do. And so it's it's I've always enjoyed the different. You know, it's um, something you can sit around a campfire and drink a little oh, bit. You can sure. have it. Some of these are really good. It's like a, a dessert drink. <laughs> And so that they the, true. the fruits and the, the different palate that you you develop really take you down the road. So, and and uh, I I feel my palate uh, evolving, and I, I don't know if that's the right word because sometimes when you think about evolution, it's adapting to to be better or whatever. But I think it just changes uh, every so often. I think when I so I I'm probably well it sounds like I'm a lot newer to the bourbon scene than you, but you know I certainly had you know the cheap stuff back in the day you know when when you're just you know rough and rowdy and a little bit <laughs> crazy yeah um and i think you know my memory i think that's when my memories were formed because i was a beer drinker yeah. and and i would say you know i've dabbled with whiskeys and bourbons a little bit over the past you know 10 years or so yeah. but really recently like i'm tired of drinking beer yeah i mean i'll have a beer every yeah. now and then but it's just it builds up so much, like the carbonation just is like killing me. It's yeah. like, oh my God, I you feel so full. heavy. Yeah. I get full. Yeah. Um, but bourbon 
can, you know, this is for those that might be new out there. Do beware because, um, well, my advice is to, when you're first getting into bourbon is everybody's going to drink it differently. Yeah. I think there's something to be said about trying it neat mm -hmm. and sipping on it for yeah. a little bit. And I'm talking small sips enough to like, just let it coat your mouth and, and get a good flavor profile. Um, but then, you know, once you start to, you know, figure out what the flavors yeah. are, then you can adjust. You could cut it with water, maybe add a, an ice cube or two or what have you. Yeah, because it will change the taste. For it you. will. It'll, it'll open it up. And so yeah. it'll, it'll what what you think is, is butter on this sip, you got a little bit of water in it, it's cinnamon. It's very different. I mean, it's just night and day different. Yeah, and, it, and that's kind of fun to experiment because I can tell you like this long branch, um, I think it gets a little bit sweeter when you put a it little bit ice on it. Yeah. And, and so... If you're getting into this, this is a really good entry, I think. I, there's nothing wrong with this either, but this is just going to taste a little bit different. It is going to taste different. Uh, and, and, and I think that's what's cool about some of these distilleries mm -hmm. is they, they have their product line, you know, especially the wild turkey. I'm kind of digging that because I got that rare breed. And even the, the private barrel tastes different than this one. But that rare breed is hot. It's yeah. hot. Yeah, it's, it's good. I like it's the hot. It, it, I do too. But yeah. All right. What else did you bring today? <clears throat> Brought uh, some Chestnut Farms. Um, Do you know anything about this one? I don't know a ton. I know it's made by the 1792 the Barton Distillery. You know, I haven't tried a lot of their products. Um, have you? I have the small batch. I drink the small okay. batch some. Um, Might I read the bottle? No, go ahead. But uh, this bottle, I believe, is exclusive uh, uh, Total Wine product. Oh, a store pick. So it... Um, it's pretty good. It's only a 90 proof, which is a little lower than what I typically drink. <laughs> You're talking about like it's a bad yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. my God, it's only 90. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Right. But uh, yeah, let's, let's have a pour right. on let's this. Let's do it. <clears throat> mm, good legs on that one. Hmm. The nose is similar to me, almost to that to that Russell's. Um, at least on first sniff. Does your nose have a memory? Do you think? Yeah. I mean, do you, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Let's calm it down a little bit, or change it a little bit. There are hints of vanilla in it. You know, and I don't know it seems snobby to kind of swirl your glass yeah. around, but you're trying to. And these glasses are called Glen Cairn glasses. Um, I think it's C A I R N. Uh, and I think they're designed to help open up the bouquet and all that sort yeah. of thing, right? So you yeah, swirl around to, yeah. and you get the, the, the aromatics released and that sort of thing. And the funnel's supposed to help with the, the nose on it. And if, I mean, I know it, it seems like, you know, I, maybe I should have my pinky up while I'm drinking this, but, you know, if you're curious about bourbon at all, stick your nose in there because there's a st strong connection between what you smell and what you taste. The interesting thing with this one is... A lot of times the heat hits you on the back end. The mm. heat a little bit will hit you on the front of my arm well, on mine. And that's that's what I appreciate, at least about uh, the wild turkeys that I've had so far, uh -huh. is the heat is consistent front to back yeah. almost always. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, the rare breed is hot from, from the jump, yeah. and it's hot in the back. And, and this both of these are smooth. Very know? smooth. You don't, you don't feel a lot of heat. Hmm. Do you know the, if this has an age statement on it? Uh, it says six years on mine. Six years. Yeah. But it does. I mean, yeah, you're right. There's good legs on this. And you've had other 1792 products. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a small batch. Um, at home. Okay. How, how is their line? Is it consistent? <laughs> it's, consistent? it's fairly consistent. Um, this one to me is a little uh, sweeter. Than, than a 17 -19 yeah small batch. Not, I mean I can taste the sweetness yeah but there's like there's a little I, I get you about that heat it's there and it's yeah. almost like you're chewing on some red hot it is it's yeah it's on the front yeah no <laughs> which is interesting yeah now this is uh like I said this was a, a much more economical friendly bottle this one I think ran about 65 dollars Remind me of the Russell's again, yeah, uh, 50 or right around 50 No, I got that for about 30 bucks. 30 bucks. All right, mm -hmm. 30 bucks. Long Branch is mid-40s, and this is 65. 60, mid-60s. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. I can see why this is good, though, because uh, the bottle that always jumps to the top of mind, and I'm surprised it's not on my, my list today, 
is that old forester 1920. Mm. Um, <clears throat> it's good stuff. It is good, but I feel like everybody knows that's good. Yeah. So I'm trying to pick something a yeah. little bit different, but would, you know, price point, this, this is comparable to that, mm -hmm. to that old forester 1920, but it's just a different flavor. It's different flavor. Uh, the proof is much higher on the, the old forester, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which probably helps with the, the taste profile. There. Yeah, but, for sure. All right. <clears throat> I dig that. Thanks for bringing that. That's, yeah. a, that's a good deal. All right. So this one, I, maybe it's premature to put it in my, my current favorite list, but I'm doing it anyway. So, you know, it's our show. We make the rules. So whatever. Um, and this is a benchmark foolproof. This is a um, Buffalo Trace Distillery product, uh, and it's 125 proof. Um, I didn't look up the mash bill, but I think it's undisclosed, but I think rumored to be the same mash bill as uh, Stag Jr. Oh, and okay. E.H. Taylor. That's, That's nice, what huh? I found. So we'll see. I love the screw top. Not really. it. It's so bootsy. <laughs> this is 20 bucks, dude. It's 20 bucks. Yeah. All right. That glass is not as clean as I'd like, so I'm going to give that one to myself. This is going to hit you in the face a little bit. Okay. But this is a deal. And, and like I said, this is uh, – I've only – Sipped on a, a little bit. I just recently got this. It's probably too, maybe it's too soon for it to be one of my current favorites, but I like the heat. Yeah. I historically have been a Buffalo Trace distillery fan, although of late I can't hardly drink Buffalo Trace. Yeah. It's so sweet. It is very, very sweet. It's so it? sweet. And there's nothing wrong with it. No. Nope. Don't mishear me. And, you know, everybody's chasing the Blantons and everybody's chasing uh, the Pappies and all that sort of thing, which, you know, if I come across, I'm not going to lie, if I come across one of those yeah. bottles one day, I'm going to buy it yeah. with and then reason. reason. Yeah. <laughs> I've already got, I've got friends that, like, yeah. if you find a bottle of Blantons and it's under this price point, get, get it. it. And they're like, that much? And like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And they're like, how much should I get? I go, buy them all. Yeah, I buy them. Because you can sell you can them sell on the secondary it. market. Yeah. But this has got heat. The interesting thing is, as high as proof as it is, it's not a real strong ethanol smell, on but it's there. It's there. It's there. It did not knock you out like some of these lower. I mean, to stuff. me, it's like it's like it's got a nose almost like a buffalo trace, mm -hmm. but with ethanol. Yeah, it's just a touch. I just yeah, I was expecting it to be a lot heavier. Uh, that's the fun part for me. After you take that, it's just like oh, if you're cold, this will warm you right up. A couple sips of something like this. Yeah, he it goes all the way down. It does it's go good. all the way down. And it I just, like it, though. I do, too. And it just, like, it lingers, too. Mm -hmm. Like, the flavor, just, like, the, and the heat, it just it sticks with you for a minute. Sometimes that heat passes really quick, but this one sticks around for a minute. Yeah, if you do not like hot chili, you would not like this. No. No, you would not. <laughs> but I think, you know, there's a lot of diversity in, in oh, what we have on the table today. Um, and, and, again, diversity of flavor profiles, diversity and, and price point. And actually, we have them, we'll line them up as far as price, but... Yeah. 20 bucks, 30 ish, mid 40s, mid 60s. And you can't go wrong, in mm. my opinion, with any of these. But this is your first taste of that one, right? First taste. It's really pretty good. I'm so proud. Yeah. I mean, for the price point, I mean, I'm, I've been pretty good. I've been watching a lot of folks that are doing these tastings of the, the sort of the quote bottom shelf bourbons, yeah. the cheap bourbons. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to start getting some more of yeah. those because I've heard they're pretty good. Yeah. What is the. Um, um, if you had a third bourbon that you would bring, what would it be? Right Old now, Forster. Old Forster. Old Forster, nineteen ten. Nineteen ten. And maybe we'll sample that off camera. But I do want to give you a taste. Do you have a glass that's more or less empty? They're almost all empty. I mean, I was told to clean my plate once. <laughs> but you, you've always, Jamie Run has always been this shape and size. Well, <laughs> since since high school. Um, <laughs> So uh, you must do a good job metabolizing whatever it is you're putting in on your plate. <laughs> I, I want you to try this because I wanted, I almost wanted to put this, and I was t uh, torn between. So uh, Amanda and I went to, um, we did a Harvest Toast recently where we were bringing our Airstream back. Okay. So Harvest Toast is a place where you can basically stay for the night. We pay a membership for the year. But there's lots of distilleries and breweries that are Harvest Host members. Yep. So we can just go stay there and camp for the night. That'd be nice. And this was in Franklin, Kentucky. And the distillery is called Dueling Grounds Distillery. And their uh, bourbon is called 
Blinkampinch. I always feel like I'm saying that right. So yeah. Probably said Blinkham a little right. bit faster. If I said it with a southern draw, it would probably be even better. But they have two bourbons. They have their Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It's aged four years. And this is, I believe, this is their um, cask strength. Yeah, cask strength. Okay. And then they have a bottle and bond. Um, that I almost put this in the favorite list, but then I thought, well... You gotta go to Franklin, Kentucky to get this, which yeah. you know is not a bad deal. But yeah, um, so it's only sold there on site. They have a few places where uh, they sell it. I didn't find anything that was super close to where we are, but it is a it's nice. No, it is a very and I'll tell you about the mash bill here once I look it up. All the rest of these easy to find. You can get them all day anywhere. Long. Yeah, all day Kroger, Total Wine. Yeah, but the thing that's interesting about this one, uh, if I not to bore the fans too much here, but uh, their mash bill is 66 corn, 22 red winter wheat, and 11 barley. That's a unique That's one. a very unique. That is unique. It's so different from anything I've ever had, and I really like it. I think it's a red wheat. I think it's got to be the red wheat. I mean, that is a... You usually don't see anybody have that in there like that. That is really good. I know I wanted to share that with you too. So, <laughs> folks, um, you know, as per usual, I forgot to tell you to give thumbs up. Um, some of you might have stuck around uh, this long. Hopefully, some of you uh, did. But if you liked uh, what we were talking about today, give us a thumbs up. I'd love to for you to share comments. What is your current favorite top one or two or three bourbons or whiskeys or rye that you're drinking? Let us know because you know. There's a good chance that we, we you might twist our arm and maybe we can drink some of those one day. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Anything else to add on this one? I don't think so. Don't all think right. So. Well, all right. Thank you all. Thank we'll you. Talk to you soon.